Hey guys, I'm doing a little RC with the family here this morning and we're going to check out the Cobra V FPV goggles and also the Q220 from Zonda Hobbies. So um, I'm going to give my phone over to my daughter, she's going to do some filming. Okay guys, so this is the Q220 here. Um, I'm going to get this uh, up in the air for its first flight. I've done a line of sight test, but I haven't done an FPV test yet. I have this quad uh, connected to a, an IA6C, I believe, um, receiver that's hooked to my Fly Sky radio here. And let's go ahead and pull these uh, goggles out of the box here. It's gonna look just like this. And when you use these goggles, you need to have some sort of a power supply for it, which is gonna be this uh, USB power supply. And it comes with a little belt clip. I'm gonna go ahead and put this belt clip on like this. And we'll see how this well this works. This is gonna clip on my belt. I think, let's see here. All right, there we go. <laughs> so, um, this set of goggles comes with two sets of antennas. This one's gonna go on the, on the goggles, and this copter already came with one, and it does say that it's right-hand circularly polarized, which is great, so. All right, so we got the antenna on. Let me go ahead and put these on here. Thank you so much to my camera girl. <laughs> All right, so it's gonna look just like that. I'm gonna plug the uh, power into here, and um, you set your channel also on this little uh, this little dongle right here. So, okay, let me just make sure that these are on. Yep, I've got a picture. And the cool thing about this picture is it's 16 by 9, which is which is really interesting that it's got a 16 9 uh, aspect ratio. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these on my head so it kind of warms up the goggles a little bit, and so they don't fog up. And let's go ahead and um, get my my uh, copter here. Um, I'll go ahead and turn on my radio. And it should be already set to this model here. So, all right. Okay. Okay. Let me just let me hit this. It's gonna spin up, Margo. So don't be afraid. Okay. Okay, we are ready to go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do one flight here and my daughter's gonna take some video. Um, I am gonna try and put on a lost model beeper on here because, okay, so this is my Drone Keeper Mini. This, all this grass out here is about six or seven inches deep. So you just turn this on and it's a, it's a good spot to actually just slip it underneath the battery strap. And even if it flies off the copter, it'll still be close to where your copter lands, okay? This will give you about 30 seconds before it'll it'll start charming. And this is an accelerometer based. Okay guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this SD card into the side of this camera here. This camera is also offered by uh, Zonda Hobbies as well. Uh, so it has a built-in DVR player. Hello, bye. Okay guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the first flight of the Zonda Hobbies Q220 and the and these new goggles by Zonda Hobby as well. So we'll check it out. Okay, and I've got a full OSD going. Okay, so Margo, please watch yourself, okay? I am. Here we go. And I am in regular mode, so. Okay. Oh, I forgot to turn on my lost model beeper. I should do that. Actually, I'll just keep it within the... Oh, I see it. Okay, I have this on for self-level mode, okay. I need to bring this in and land it, Marco, so I'm going to land it right in front of us in the grass here. I need to put this in acro mode because I can't fly self-level mode anymore. Dan, should I pause? Right there, okay, all right. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> Okay, first thing to note guys here is that the saturation on the camera is really highly saturated. Uh, not bad. Let's see what it looks like when it's going into the sun here. Dad, I can't see. Margo, you can, it's okay. You, as long as you're hearing my voice, it should be fine. Uh, going into the sun. Uh-oh. 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 I'm, 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 I just crashed. Okay, so I was going up pretty high and all of a sudden it just lost signal and I got my final uh, OSD where it shows the stats on it. So it's out there somewhere. 
and I have that lost model beeper, so I'm gonna walk out there and see if I can find it. So it's nice to know that this copter actually has a lost model function as well, if it, but that's only if the uh, plug stays plugged in. So it looks like I don't have any damage. I probably just got too far. This might. This is probably a problem with the receiver, probably not the copter. So what I'll do now is I'll just make sure I keep the, the co this copter much, much closer, okay? All right, so Margo, let's hike up the hill here. We'll go back to the car. I just want to mention from that last crash, there's absolutely no damage to the quad, and it fell from about 150 feet up, but you know, onto soft grass, which is nice. Uh, okay, guys, we're gonna go for our second flight. And I'm not gonna take it very far because I have this smaller receiver in there. All right. I'm trying to keep this more close now, this time. The rates seem pretty good so far with the copper. There's a lot of first times for me here. I'm actually, this is my first time ever flying with the, uh, with the uh, Fly Sky Radio. It seems like the copper has enough power. That's nice. Looks like I might need a little bit more camera tilt here. When you go behind the land, I can't see you. you just uh, see me uh, flying I am, Dad, I am. Okay, cool. I'm not used to flying with all this information on the screen either, uh, which is really uh, distracting for me. So I really wish they wouldn't have the heads-up display. Uh, they don't need it. Um, as far as the lines on, I would like all the information pushed to the sides, uh, but not not bad. Oh, there we go. I just went in again. All right, so I'm going to disarm there. Okay, guys. So for some reason, the copter just died and went into the, to the bushes. I had plenty of battery left, so most likely it's the receiver. I'm gonna go for a walk. Let me just see if this is gonna throttle up or not. Um. Yeah. Okay. So it's still, it's still operational, which is good. Okay. So I'm gonna unplug this. Lights. Uh, number one, the goggles are great. Uh, I love the picture. It's a 16 by nine. It's very, very vivid. I don't know if the vividness comes from the camera or from the goggles, but um, they flew really well. I didn't get any breakup whatsoever uh, during the, all the flights. So that's perfect. Um, the only wish is I wish they would have made this cable a little bit longer because it's just barely long enough for me not these not to pull off my head here so they need to make this cable long enough and it would nice be nice if there was a plug here and, and uh, that you can just you know, plug it as far as the copter goes it's tough and it lost signal twice but I have a feeling that's the the receiver I chose I'm gonna try this again with a um, Tyrannus receiver and it should uh, work a lot better because this these IA6S are they're mainly made for like micro quads and I was getting this pretty far away although I'm not that far away I'm really surprised that it lost signal these the, the uh, active element is all the way up into the side of this tube so um, 
So I need to determine whether that's a problem with the receiver or a problem with the copter. Now, the copter flies just fine. It needs some tuning. I'm not used to flying something that's a slight bit heavier. So I need to put some different PIDs in there. But other than that, the thing is tough as nails. You can see it hit the ground two times pretty darn hard. So anyway, thanks for joining my channel, guys. I'll talk to you later. Thank you, Margo, for filming. Mm -mm. <laughs> All right, see you guys.